In this video, we're going to have a look at how to determine the area of a polygon. In the previous videos, we had a look at the perimeter of shape, that is, the distance right around the shape. Next, we're going to have a look at the area, that is, the size of the space that the shape covers. Here we have a square that has a length and a breadth of one centimeter. So originally, this was a one centimeter line that was expanded by one centimeter, forming a square that we call one centimeter square. Centimeter square is written as centimeter to the power of two. And that is why any area's unit is always the unit squared. Next up, we have a line of a length of three centimeters that is widened by four centimeters and now consists of 12 of these centimeter squares. That means that the area of the shape is 12 centimeters squared. This area could have also been calculated by taking the length and multiplying it with the breadth of this figure. And from here, we are also going to form the formula for the area of a square and a rectangle. The sides of a square are all equal in length and can therefore simply be named the sides. To get the area of a square, it will then be side times side or side squared. For a rectangle, we'll use the symbols length and breadth. So the area of a rectangle will be the length multiplied by the breadth. To determine the formula for the area of a triangle, you need to realize that a triangle is simply half a rectangle. So, to find the formula for the area of a triangle, we are going to start off with our rectangle length times breadth and take half of that. But, because not all triangles have a length and breadth that are perpendicular to each other, we are going to take it one step further and specify that it is half of the base of the triangle multiplied with the perpendicular height to that. So when we move on to an acute triangle, you still need to know where the base and its perpendicular height is. The base will not always lie flat on the ground. Depending on the information, you will have one of the sides of the triangle as your base. From here, you then need to act as if the triangle is turned until that specific side lies flat on the ground and next we need to find the highest point of this triangle and that will be the vertex right across from your base. The perpendicular height will then be the line drawn from this vertex perpendicular to the base. If we then have a look at an obtuse triangle and make our base the line that is lying on the ground you will see that the height drawn from our highest vertex has to lie outside the triangle to be drawn perpendicular to the same level as our base. Now let's go and have a look at how we can use these formulas. Determine the area of each of the following shapes. The first shape is a rectangle and for the area of a rectangle we are going to say length times breadth which can be 8 times 5 or 5 times 8 to get to an area of 40 meters squared. It doesn't matter which side you choose to make the length and which the breadth. It all depends on from what direction you are approaching this rectangle. Both will still give you an answer of 40. Remember that area is always a unit squared. In example 2, we have a triangle, and the formula will be half times the base times the perpendicular height. In our sketch, we have one of the sides of the triangle given as 15, which will form our base. From here, if we draw a line perpendicular to the highest point of this triangle, it will be 13, and that is our perpendicular height. So for our area, we will have half of our base of 15 multiplied by the height of 13 
which will give us a final answer of 97,5 centimeters squared. In example 3, we once again have a triangle and we need to identify the base and the perpendicular height. The base can now be either the 10 centimeters or the 9 centimeter side of this triangle. But we are going to have to use the 10 centimeters because we do not have anything drawn perpendicular to the 9 centimeter side. We do, however, know that the height perpendicular to our 10 centimeters is 7. So substituting into the formula, we will have a half times our base of 10 times the height of 7, and that is 35 centimeters squared. In example 4, our shape is a combination of a square and a triangle. That means we'll have to determine the area of the square as well as that of the triangle and add them up. For the square, we already have all the information because the formula for the area of a square is side squared and we know that each side of the square is 8 meters. For our triangle, our formula is a half times the base times the perpendicular height. So we now need to determine which two sides will form our base and height. Because of angles on a straight line, we know that this triangle has a 90 degree angle. And then because all the sides of the square are equal, we know that one of the side lengths of the triangle is 8 meters. We are also given that the hypotenuse of this triangle is 10 meters. But for the formula for the area of a triangle, we need the base and perpendicular height, the two sides that are perpendicular on each other. Therefore, we need to determine the length of the base, and we can do that using Pythagoras. So to determine the value of the base squared, we are going to take our hypotenuse and square that and then subtract the other side square. And that is the theorem of Pythagoras. 10 squared minus 8 squared is 36. And the square root of this will give us the value of B, which will then be 6 meters. And now we can finally determine the area of our shape. For the square, the sides are 8 meters. For our triangle, we've just determined that the base is 6 meters and the height was given as 8. So the total area for this shape is 88 meters squared. In the next video, we are going to have a look at the area of a circle.